Thank you. And my favorite mode of being is, or what I want to call myself is excitement junkie. And I really, really get very inspired when um, uh, to work with the clients, the kind of clients I work with. And the free and open source software clients who Evan described um, usually are very, very similar to how startups are. It's one person or two people or three people assign themselves some problem and then they go about solving that. And then they discover, oh, there's some legal issues. And we have no money or the patience for all the legalese. And it's going to come with a bill. And uh, why are we going to waste our time doing that? Because we would like to solve a problem. And thereafter, once we've solved the problem, go about raising money, either getting rich or just releasing the software and providing services or going about solving another problem. And that's where I come into being and to do their work. Um, the, the difference between a free and open source software project and how they view some of the legal issues and how other companies view is pretty stark. But what helps is seeing both sides of the coin. In the morning, it can, it, it's possible that I'm talking to a client of ours whose software is being used by the Oracle Corporation and in the evening, speaking to them about how they view that side of the issue. They're, we're generalists here because the startups or the free software clients cannot afford very expensive lawyers. We get paid by others to do their work. So we get a lot of experience doing different things. It's the trademarks, it's the copyright, it's the patent strategy, or it's writing the privacy policy of somebody who is doing um, a, a social network, or it is writing about content usage policy. What are they going to do with your data? What are they going to, how are they going to use it? And considering how now each project or each startup, no matter where they are headquartered, but the goal is always the world. So the strategies are different. Whether it's a patent strategy, which may be a different strategy in India than to what you want to follow in the United States or in Europe, European Union or Japan, or it's a trademark strategy, not just the law differs, but it also about is the business. So that's one aspect of what we do. Trademarks, copyright, patents, as I said, the usual things about incorporation. Sometimes you want to be a company somewhere, sometimes you want to be a nonprofit, at times you want to be a mix of two. And then there's the other part, which is when you want someone else to acquire you, or you want to raise more money to become much bigger. And uh, the idea is to present a much bigger, larger picture and bring to you a different perspective. How does the guy on the other side of the table view you? What are they thinking about your business? What is their plan about you? What are they going to actually expect and who from you once they give you the money? When the sharks in the shark tank are evaluating your proposals, what is it that they're going to tell you is going to change later on by the person who sits on your board? That kind of a larger picture is something which we just draw because of the experience. The only difference which I feel sometimes is that we're not lawyers, we try to be counsels because that's about advising you what your strategy is. That's why uh, it's not about record and bills. It's not about doing it on an hourly basis to say, yeah, I'll solve a little bit of your problem, but I will wait for when you run into a different kind of an issue related to the same problem. If I write that somebody's, or if I decide about how they're going to go about licensing and brand management, I want to go and do it in one go and think about everything they might run into for the next three years, four years, five years. So our practice brings together that kind of an experience. Yes, um, <coughs> we work in the US and we work here. Uh, that's where most of the lawyers who work in our offices are licensed to, but then we work, about, work with many other people, mostly because free and open source software, at least the licenses are similar. Copyright law may change, but the basic principles stay the same. And just describing those or helping people understand those is what forms a big part of our job there. The other things which we do here is because we have a firm belief that free and open source software is cheap raw materials for all startups. We're highly efficient, superbly 
easily available and accessible, very efficient, high quality raw materials available for everybody to use. And it's only going to increase if you keep contributing back to the pool. And we do think that the free and open, that the internet freedom movement is going to be fueled by free and open source software. That's why the little description in my profile was about an online civil liberties activist. That's mostly to do because those old issues actually make a business environment which is conducive to how you want to do. You just want to solve problems. Everybody believes in this city or in the valley that worlds can, all world's problems can be solved by technology. But maybe not all, some of them definitely can be. And uh, for our job is just to be facilitators so that you can go about doing your business and inventing. Our job is not that we're always an end in itself. And we don't think that our role is to tell you about what you should be doing, but just to show you the bigger picture and tell you where the pitfalls are so that problems don't come knocking, so that you can manage your risks and to make that possible for you. That's where we stand. And on the activism side, it's it's different issues. It's uh, I didn't get into activism just because it's some client who has a problem, who's getting too many notices from a police guy and trying to tell him to just destroy his business, or it does not know how Information Technology Act in India works and comes to us, and then we think of a bigger strategy, and then we go up to the Supreme Court to solve that problem. And just because that has very far-reaching consequences for how free speech and expression is viewed and various other businesses will come, that was just collateral benefit for everyone. Then there is network neutrality issues or right to privacy issues because how you are going to build your business based on policies is going to be determined by the law of the country or what is the policy adopted by the executive or other forms, uh, other organs of the government. So that's another part of our work. So there is, of course, a lot of excitement in my work, and that's why I do it. But I, and that's where I would land because I think we should have a conversation more than just listening to me. So thank you, Wendy.